So the charity partners themselves, uh, with the dozen plus events uh, that you host over the course of any given year, how are you choosing who you're going to work with for and who you're going to align with each event that you, that you host? Well, charity partner selection is a highly technical process that mm -hmm. involves a dartboard, a blindfold, a kangaroo, and a stock of celery. Uh, okay. It's personal. Don't ask about the celery or the kangaroo. Okay. Uh, no, no. It's actually one of the great things is that our charity partners are nominated by our participants, by our members of okay. our various running clubs. So you can't be solicited by a group that wants to that wants a benefit right. from a check, even though they know that they're a great organization with a great mission or what have you. Right. And so we, in, in some of those cases where we have had... Um, Charitable organizations contact us directly. We inform them, sorry, you have to be nominated by a member. I consider that to be a vital first step okay. in the vetting process. Because um, let's be blunt, if you're a nonprofit and you can't find one person in the world to say something nice about you, eh, it's probably telling about your organization. Right, right. Uh, but then we look, at, we get over 500 nominations a year okay. uh, across all of our various 500 uh, unique nominations five for 500 different individuals now sometimes there's a lot of um, uh, repeated nominations okay All so right. the same charity might be nominated 10 times okay okay because there was something in the news and a lot of people saw the same one and sure. they, and and independently of each other they nominate the same charity right. um, and some years it's been you know 300 some years it's been a hundred but right now we're, we're hitting four to five hundred. Uh, charity nominations a year, okay. and at the end of the day, we select fifteen, um, okay. and fifteen to twenty charity partners each year. So it's it's really really competitive. So, but we want our our participants to know that the charities that we select as our charity partners are legit, great, wonderful, vetted charities. Mm. Uh, then there's a, there's also an issue of size. Um, some awesome. some charities are just to be blunt too big. Okay. Uh, your American Cancer Society, your you know your Susan G. Komen Wounded Warrior Project. These are these are large uh, fundraising organizations. They 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 do great work, but they bring in uh, tens, if not hundreds, of millions of dollars a year. Right. The forty, fifty, sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars we might be able to raise with Potterhead Running Club, or the twenty or thirty thousand dollars we might be able to raise with Hoovian, or mm. the five to ten thousand dollars we might be able to raise with Chilton Running Club. They honestly wouldn't notice. Mm. Um, our very first year, 2014, all seven of our events supported the same charity partner. Mm. Uh, it was all for the Dana Farber Cancer Institute, the Jimmy Fund Great in point. Boston. Great organization. And we donated a little over $10,000 to them from that very first year. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was way more than my expectations. My goal had been to raise $500 right. uh, for Dana Farber. And we raised over $10,000. Very, very awesome year. Yeah. Um, but then I realized that we could do a whole lot more good if we were focused on smaller, direct impact charities. Okay. Dana Farber is a $200 million a year fundraising beast, and they do spectacular stuff for research. And it, you can't do research on the level they do without that kind of funding. Right, absolutely. But we thought that it might be best if we. If we had donated $10,000 to a smaller organization that was directly impacting individual human lives, that we could make an even bigger impact on those lives. For them, right, and at that scale. So uh, starting in 2015, we went to this new model of supporting a different charity partner for every event. Right. And the first charity partner that we selected uh, was an organization called Miles for Cystic Fibrosis. They're mm -hmm. based in Atlanta, Georgia. And they specifically help families with kids with cystic fibrosis cover the expenses of the consumables, the tissues, the gauze, the, the filters, and all of the stuff that health insurance isn't covering. That just comes out of that family's grocery bill right. every month. And they help with those consumables. Okay. Their annual budget is around $50,000. And so if we gave them $10,000, wow, what a huge impact yeah. that would make. How many more families in the Atlanta area would they be able to assist? Mm -hmm. As it turns out, we had a very successful second year. We ended up giving them over $40,000. Right. And uh, they were very happy. Yes. With, like, I can with, see them being rather with, pleased with seeing their operating rather, budget right. nearly doubled. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nearly doubled with one magical donation right. from a bunch of Harry Potter nerds. Um, surprise! Yeah, uh, yeah. Magic is real. I'm curious though, when it comes to the um, uh, 
the the organizations that uh, that people are are participating, running, walking, whatever for. Is there a is there a sort of a criteria? Is there a way that you're trying to fit the charity partner either to the running club or to the specific event? Is there is there kind of a method to the madness on how they get uh, aligned and adjoined? Well, back in 2015, 2016, that time frame, it was kind of we found an awesome charity, we're having an event, event charity go. Though right. those two usually didn't they didn't have any kind of connection. Okay. Now we've decided to focus, over the last several years, we've focused on having some kind of connective tissue mm -hmm. between the charity, um, the, the mission of the charity, how they do their business, and the event that we're doing. Um, okay. So a great example, in uh, we did an event called the Constant Vigilance 5K. It mm -hmm. was an Alistair Mad Eye Moody themed event. Sure. And we supported an organization called Limbs for Life. Limbs for Life, based in Oklahoma City, they provide free prosthetic legs to amputees. Okay. Alistair Mad Eye Moody was an amputee. Right. There's a there's an easy connection. Sure. And so, by doing that, it it really helps with the messaging, and getting people interested about the charity. When when we're talking about, you know, Harry being an orphan, mm -hmm. and then we help foster families, right. uh, like through our, you know, our charity partner, Transfiguring Adoption. Right. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a clear way for the fans to immediately relate to that charity because it relates to their fandom. And brings it all home. Yeah. yeah.